Hey guys, this is Amazing Tech. I'm back with another video. This is a short term review of Samsung Galaxy S20 Ultra. So it's been more than four months since Samsung flagship has um, come into the market. An unbelievable specification list, as you would normally expect from Samsung whenever they launch their flagship. The flagship phone, that is the Galaxy S20 Ultra, came with the tag of the best camera phone a human being can own on this planet. Yeah, from a specification point of view, that is right. This uh, phone has been my primary device for all these months, since the time I had this phone in my hand, sometime in March. I've been trying to use it in every which way I can. I'm not going to recap on the complete phone specification one more time, but to give you a quick highlight on some of the biggest specification items uh, Samsung has put on this phone are mainly around the camera. So on the back, there is a 108 megapixel sensor with a 100x space zoom, which um, added a large camera bump on the back. No, I'm not, not really upset about that. This is what you can expect, especially with a large sensor like this. And on the front, you have a 40 megapixel sensor with an aperture of f2.2 and a battery as large as 5000 mAh. Will it keep your phone charged for the whole day? We will see about that. Okay, display has been one of the strongest areas Samsung always uh, does so good. This time around, the expectation was Samsung to put a 120 Hertz refresh rate onto their display, which is already good, but I mean, an expectation for the last uh, year and a half, I think. So this time, Samsung definitely listened to their fans and customers uh, by adding a 120 Hertz refresh rate onto their display. But there is definitely a catch. Not really sure why Samsung did that. So, what I really liked, no surprise here, of course the display. With the 6.9 inch Quad HD Plus Dynamic AMOLED 2X Infinity O at 511 ppi, the screen is absolutely stunning. There is no second thoughts here on how beautiful this display is, and color pops whenever you unlock the screen. What do you say? It's magic. You can throw any games or videos at this monster. It'll handle without a lag. Coming to the cameras, they're really good. Samsung knows how to work their camera. Because of the COVID-19, I haven't really ventured out so much in the last these many months, but I still went out taking a lot of outdoor pictures. Um, and these Sensors indeed produce some amazing results. But I would think a hundred times before showing a picture captured with 100x zoom to someone. They call it the space zoom, but it hardly produces anything. Yeah, of course, you can zoom in a large, a distant object and then see the worst blurry picture you can ever see. The zoom is good for 10x. That's all. I would say the output at 10x zoom is what you would want to use. It has a 108 MP sensor and whenever you take the picture, it gives you the best details that you can ever see. But as usual, the images produced from these cameras have definitely uh, improved greatly when it comes to color reproduction. As usual, the color saturation stays true to the traditional Samsung way. Though Samsung has added many different modes to the camera app, an average user may not need them all. But no complaints here, more is better, right? I think you have a lot of options to customize and uh, take your pictures uh, the way you want. And the Pro definitely helps me take some beautiful pictures. Night mode is good, but not great compared to the night mode features in uh, phones from Apple and Google. I might have taken hundreds of images using the monstrous sensor. I'm gonna let you decide the quality of the images taken with these cameras. I'm gonna run this for a few minutes for your decision, but you can let me know in the comment section.
The video capability is great. Again, uh, 8K video on the phone is ahead of its time, but Samsung always want to be the front runner with their new tech and innovation. By the way, you, you could also capture 33 megapixel still photos from these videos. It's amazing. 4K videos are standard and they work really well. Uh, this is what I've been using and uh, it has kept me happy so far because the screen is almost baseless. Your streaming experience is just extraordinary. The amount of memory they've got on this phone is 12 GB. More is better. Keep every apps in the memory and you can access them later anytime. So you will never have to open them again. So over the course of last four months, when it comes to battery, it has never been an issue. Most of the time it lasted a complete day. When I say complete day, it means a complete work day. Maybe around 12 hours before I plug it in with very normal usage. Not some heavy duty gaming or streaming or things like that. So one thing is noticeable in the design language of their custom Android OS One UI. It has surely transformed the user experience. This one UI also enables one-handed usage for a large phone like this. Most of their apps uh, have surely improved and always is smooth uh, and less buggy and have had no real problem with it so far. I think this is one of the best custom UI that you can find on any phone. Is Samsung trying to do too much when they could have added the right amount to make this a perfect phone. I'm paying the big bucks for a phone expecting magic from a space 100x zoom and a 108 megapixel camera sensor, but it's, it's surely under delivered. I wouldn't recommend this phone if you're going for just because of this camera specifications. Samsung has been delivering some of the best devices which demands attention and obsession at the same time out superior spec they bring tech to the market too soon before they are ready for prime time which surely disappoints many of those samsung followers who are so excited by these leaks and finally when it hits the market and get the phone in their hands it kind of disappointment most of the time hope you enjoyed the video what do you think about samsung galaxy s20 ultra if you are using one do you like it or you hate it let me know